Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today I'm going to show you the easy way to measure parasitic current draw. A while back I had shot a video talking a bit about parasitic current draw, but I thought it would be really important to follow that up and show you guys exactly how I do parasitic current draws. This is one of those tests where there's multiple ways to do it, and while none of the ways are going to really be wrong, there are certain ways and techniques to do a better job, more accurately, faster than others. This also can really depend on the age of the vehicle and the equipment. If we're talking about a 98 GTI like my GTI right over here, you can use a different strategy than you would on, say, a 2015 Torag. The way I'm going to show you is the way I do it at the shop on the most modern vehicles. And this way is great because you don't have to open up any circuits, you don't have to disconnect your battery to get your meter hooked up to it, you don't have to fiddle around with one of these amp clamps which is really challenging to get calibrated right, or break out the big test equipment in order to measure. Like I mentioned in that other video, pulling fuses and disrupting circuits in any way, even with the key off, can cause the draw to go away temporarily and lead to you not finding a problem with the car at that moment when there's actually something going on. The only tools that we're going to really need for this is going to be our multimeter as well as a chart showing a relationship between voltage drop and current draw. I got these charts from the Power Probe website because they're really nice. They're color charts, you can download them, you can print them, and it shows what style of fuse that they're talking about, which is important. There are other resources as well, but I highly recommend the Power Probe one, and I'll be sure to put a link down in the description so you can check that out. Before we get started on this test, we want to make sure that we check our multimeter leads. Simply turn your multimeter to ohms and touch the leads together. You should get about 0.1 or 0.2 ohms. If you get anything higher than that, or if you wiggle the leads around and your number's jumping all over the place, it's time to get new meter leads. I can't tell you guys how many times I've seen other people get burned by this and been burned myself. So now anytime my multimeter gets turned on, the very first thing I do is check the leads. And if I'm even concerned about them being bad at all, I get new ones. There's no way to rely on accurate readings when you're not 100% sure that your test equipment is good. We're going to be using my Passat for this test. The fuse panel is in a really great location. It makes it really easy to shoot a video. Your car could be different. Fuse panel may be in a different location, but the testing of this really is exactly the same no matter what kind of car you have. So with that, let's head out and check for a current draw. All right, so before getting started on the current draw, we're gonna just do a quick check and make sure the battery is good. We're gonna turn our meter on and turn it to DC volts. Now you'll notice that this voltage is a bit low to accurately do this test. We would wanna make sure we charge this battery and had it somewhere around 12.6 volts. If your battery has a weak state of charge, it can affect the reading of the current draw test. We also wanna load the battery by starting the car and make sure that it doesn't drop below 10 volts. This is also going to be a perfect time to check the charging voltage. You should see something in the neighborhood of 14 volts, but be sure that all the loads are off. If you have the air conditioning on, the heated seats, the defroster, the radio booming, and while that's not abnormal, we want to make sure we're getting to around 14 volts unloaded. After we've confirmed the battery is good, we want to make sure we fix any known issues. If we have a door latch that's not locking, or any faults stored in any of the vehicle's computers, we want to make sure we take care of that first. There's no sense in trying to find a potential problem while ignoring something we know is wrong. That goes for issues in the starting charging system as well. Next, we want to begin to prep the car. We want to start with latching the hood and all the doors. Now, the reason we don't want to simply just shut all of the doors is we're going to need to get access to this fuse panel. So if we shut the door, we're going to have to unlock the car and open it back up, and that's going to defeat our current draw test. So it's always better to go ahead and latch all the doors, the hood, and the trunk, then lock the doors and put the car to sleep. It may also be a good idea to mark the doors 
in some way that's very obvious so that you don't accidentally walk by and just slam the door shut. It's almost second nature to walk by a door and want to shut it. Putting some tape on the latch or the handle may help remind you not to shut the door. Another thing that I like to do is just double check in the instrument cluster. Make sure it doesn't show any of the doors, the hood, or the trunk still open. If it does, you might have a problem with one of the latches, and that could be your draw problem too. Next, we're gonna lock our car, and we're gonna give it about an hour to two hours in order for the vehicle to go fully to sleep. Once the car's fully asleep, we're gonna take our other multimeter, and we're gonna put it on millivolts. Next, we're gonna measure the voltage drop across the fuse. That's as simple as putting a meter lead on each side of the contact. As you do that, you're going to get a reading and then it should drop down to zero. If it doesn't drop down to zero, we know we might have a problem. So normally the way I do it is I measure each fuse and I look at my meter to see the drop. It takes about three to five seconds per fuse for it to drop all the way down. To give you an example of a circuit with a draw, versus a circuit without a draw. I'm on the radio fuse here, and as you can see, we have no volt drop across the fuse. But when I turn the radio on, you can see we now are reading 3.4 millivolt. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot other than we know we have some current going through this circuit. Once we know the amount of volt drop across our fuse, we're going to use the chart on the Power Probe website to see how much amp draw that volt drop is causing. If we're not sure what kind of fuse we have, we can click on the chart and right up here in the top, it'll show us what kind of fuse they're talking about. In this case, we have one standard fuse. This is the size fuse that we used for the radio. We're gonna use the guide at the top to find the amperage and color fuse we had. That's a yellow 20 amp fuse. Then we're gonna look at the numbers down here on the left and we're gonna scroll all the way down till we see our reading. We had a reading of about 3.4 which means we had a current draw of about 0.1 amps. That's about three times more draw than our spec of 35 milliamps. While that's not gonna cause the battery to die in 15 minutes, for an extended period of time, that can lead to a dead battery. Now, this is a higher line radio with an amplifier, so that's a pretty decent draw. But let's look at the kind of draw that'll kill the battery in just a few hours. This fuse is going to be for the high beams on the vehicle, and not both high beams, this is actually only the fuse for one side high beam. As I turn the high beams on, you can see we have 29.9, bordering on 30 millivolt reading. Let's look at our chart and see how much current that draws. Now the volt drop we were checking on the high beam fuse was a mini fuse that's 10 amps. So we're gonna stay in this chart here, we're gonna scroll all the way down, that's a big time draw. We had a reading of 30, millivolts, our chart only goes up to 10. So we're gonna multiply that times three, and that's gonna give us a reading over four amps. I think it's pretty safe to say that if we had a high beam on, we would see it, but that gives you an idea of how much current one bulb can draw. Now, I know what you're thinking, Charles, this is gonna take forever to do a proper current draw this way. Why can't I simply just pull the fuses out and see if the draw on my meter goes away? Well, like I mentioned earlier, that can upset the rest of the car and the computers. We're running things on virtual powers, modules, powering other modules, so that may not really be the best way. And after you've done this a few times, you can run down checking each one of these fuses and maybe only spend about 10 minutes max. And it goes really fast if you don't find a problem at all. And remember, before wrapping it up, you wanna unlock the car and open all the doors. And you can go ahead and remove your tape or whatever way you mark the car to remember not to slam the door. So there you have it. We have checked for current draw. We've seen what a big draw looks like, what a minor draw looks like, and how to set it up and how to use a multimeter. Again, remember your battery has to be in good condition. Your starting charging system has to be in good condition. Otherwise, you may be wasting your time doing this test and not fixing a known problem. While finding the circuit that's causing the draw is really easy, finding the component on that circuit might be a little bit more challenging. You really need to know and understand all the things that are on the circuit and all of the things that are not on the circuit that communicate and talk to the things that are on the circuit. So it can get deep and very challenging to find a current draw, 
especially on modern cars. You have modules talking to each other over CAN bus. This module way over here can wake up this module right here. So it can get to be a really deep problem, but this is a really easy and quick way to check and see if you actually have a draw in the first place. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have questions or comments, you know what to do. If you like this video and got some value from it, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube. Don't forget to ding the bell or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. If you wanna support the show, get exclusive content, exclusive discounts, as well as VW Audi training manuals and a secret Facebook group where we do Facebook Live videos just for crew members, check out the crew membership program. There's a link down in the description. You can learn more there. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. All right, guys, hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you never have to do this test ever in your career or in your life, but if you do, this is the best way to do it.